Hey everybody, it's Mitch, and welcome to my next video. Today, we have got another Dungeons & Dragons 3.5 Prestige class for you. And today, from the Complete Arcane, we have got the Acolyte of the Skin. So, we're going to talk about what the Acolyte of the Skin is. We're going to talk about how you go about becoming an Acolyte of the Skin. Uh, we're then going to talk about uh, what you get as an Acolyte of the Skin. And finally, we're going to talk about uh, how good it is and how you might potentially use it in a build. So let's get started. So the Acolyte of the Skin is uh, a bit of a dark, twisted one. Um, so basically, it's a spellcaster who somehow or another learned about an ancient method um, uh, of obtaining power by basically replacing your own skin with that of a still living demon uh, or devil, uh, either way. Um, so yeah, you're replacing your skin with that of a fiend and not a fiend skin, a fiend itself. So like it is its own living entity. It's quite, uh, quite the deal. Ah, sorry. I don't know why I keep getting hiccups like this. It's weird. Anyways. Um, so yeah, that is what they are. So let's talk about uh, how you go about becoming uh, an Acolyte of the Skin. Uh, so yeah, uh, first off, you have to be non-good. I mean, makes sense. I can't imagine a good creature uh, grafting, uh, re replacing their skin with that of a demon or devil. Like, that is insane. No, uh, you don't have to be evil, but you, you definitely can't be good for that. Um, uh, skills, I uh, need knowledge to play in six ranks. Makes sense. Uh, you got to, you know, have some knowledge of, you know, fiends in order to uh, think to do something like this. Um, spells uh, or spell-like abilities, you have to have um, be caster level fifth. Okay, uh, simple enough. Um, let's see, special, uh, you must have made peaceful contact um, uh, with a summoned evil outsider. Okay, simple enough. Um, and uh, special, you must undergo the ritual of bonding. So the ritual of bonding is, uh, that's an ordeal. So that's the process of actually replacing your skin with that of a still living fiend. Um, so basically, uh, it takes 10 rounds, and each round you take 1d4 points of damage, which is crazy. Well, okay, it's only 10d4 points of damage total, so it's not really that bad. But still not a bad idea to keep some uh, potions handy or have fast healing. Uh, to help, uh, you know, get rid of that. Fast Healing 3 ought to be plenty to um, handle that. Um, and basically, uh, it, you just notice a sheen for, to your skin at first, but things start to change as you level up. Um, so yeah, it's uh, the process isn't described too much, but yeah, that's what it takes to get in. So let's talk about what you get. So first off, you get a decent base attack bonus so um, you know not good not bad uh, it's an average one uh, you get a good fortitude and will save so that's pretty decent um, and you get uh, bad will uh, reflex save though um, you get uh, a d8 hit dice which is really high for a caster um, so that's quite nice uh, especially for an arcane caster although this can go for divine as well um, so you're definitely gonna be more tanky uh, from this than normal. Um, in addition to that, you get two plus int skills, so not great. The skill list uh, isn't bad. Um, it's not. Uh, it's bad for a divine caster though, since they don't get knowledge religion. But um, an arcane caster would be just fine uh, with this. Um, let's see. Then they get uh, uh, they get spell casting uh, at every even level. Their spell casting level goes up, but not the odd ones. So you are going to lose out on a good amount of spell casting going into this. So that's that's something. Um, uh, at first level, you also get something called Wear Fiend. Um, basically, it's you know, you're know you wearing um, a fiend as your skin. Um, and that causes some things to happen. Uh, first off, your natural armor will increase by one. You gain a plus two inherent bonus to dex. So that's kind of nice. And you gain dark vision out to 60 feet. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, 
Now at second level, you uh, no actually no not second level. At first level, you still you uh, gain the ability to cast poison. Uh, so once a day, as a spell like ability, you can uh, basically use the poison spell, um, and eventually you can use it uh, two times per day at fifth level. Um, it's going to have a, a DC of fourteen uh, plus your uh, primary spell casting modifier, so not bad. Um, uh, so whatever that happens to be, so that, that's that's pretty solid actually. Um, it basically is just saying it's a fourth level spell. It counts as a fourth level spell. Um, yeah, that's actually not too bad. Um, and for some reason, it says that your caster level uh, is eighth level for that, just fixed, which is weird because you're likely going to be sixth level when you first get this. So that's two levels higher at first, but then like as you level up, it still stays at eighth and it becomes worse. So that's unfortunate, but I don't think caster level matters that much for this spell. So it's much more about the DC. So yeah, um, you gain flame resistance at uh, second level. The so you get fire resistance ten. Um, you get a fiendish glare. This one's actually interesting. This one is at third level. Um, basically, uh, once per day, you can make a glare attack at an opponent, and um, it is subject to spell, uh, and it's supernatural, so no spell resistance and no saving throw. So, ah, uh, sorry, my eyes bugging me. Weird bodies, man. You know what I mean? Uh, anyways, um, so yeah, so no saving throw. Uh, so there, there's no uh, no spell resistance, no saving throw, at least for the initial effect. So that's really nice. That makes it this really hard to resist, although it is a mind affecting fear effect. So if they're immune to mind affecting or fear effects, then uh, it's not going to work. But um, that's basically the only way to resist it. That or uh, potentially metal uh, with a uh, saving throw because uh, the second half does allow a saving, to, uh, a will save. So it's potent, it, it's possible that uh, DM would rule uh, that, um, making this a uh, save with metal would prevent everything. Um, personally, I'd rule that. Um, uh, although it's possible they wouldn't, just because of the way this is worded. Um, so basically, uh, it's a standard action. Uh, it have to be within 100 feet. But um, they are going to, you are going to make uh, them shaken, I believe. Let's see. And... Da -da 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 -da. Target becomes shaken for ten minutes, which is a significant amount of time. And shaken's a decent side is a pretty decent uh, side effect. Um, so that's pretty nice to be able to do that to somebody for uh, with basically no resistance. On top of that, there is a will save, and if they fail that, uh, they're going to be stunned um, anywhere between one and ten rounds, depending on their health. Uh, so if they have a lot of HP, it's only one round. But if they have less than fifty HP, then guess what? It's going to be 10 rounds, which is a really long time. Uh, so you can do a lot to them during that time. Uh, that's a lot of time. That's a long time to lose your turn for. Um, yeah, so that's actually a pretty good one. Um, they get skin adaptation at uh, fifth level. Um, basically, that's going to make it so that their natural armor bonus uh, increases to plus two. Um, and they're also going to gain a plus two con. Uh, and their dark vision is actually going to extend out to 120 feet. So, decent. Uh, sixth level, they gain cold resistance 10. Not bad. Uh, they get glare of the pit at um, seventh level. Uh, and basically, this is going to let them once a day make a glare attack, um, which uh, it's basically going to be two range touch attacks out their eyes. Um, they can be on the same target or different targets. Um, and... Uh, that's good uh, out to 100 feet and they do 8d6 points of damage. I mean, that's not terrible. 16d6 uh, points of damage for a standard action isn't bad, actually. And uh, ray attacks are some of the most potent and hard to resist um, attacks out there. So that's actually not bad at all. Uh, they get Summon Fiend at ninth level, which lets them, depending on what kind of skin they have, whether it's uh, devilish or uh, demonic, uh, uh, they can summon either, what is it, a Chain Devil or um, uh, a Babu. So, okay, not bad. 
Um, not super familiar with demons, but I'm quite familiar with devils. And chain devils are relatively strong. So uh, if the summon lasts for an hour and they will do your bidding. So pretty nice. Um, and then uh, at 10th level, they get fiendish symbiosis. Um, basically, um, at this point, they gain damage reduction uh, good uh, or 10 good uh, on top of that. Their type becomes outsider, although they are still capable of being revived as normal, uh, assuming they uh, their type was one that could be revived to begin with. Um, so yeah, um, that's basically uh, that's basically all that's basically all they get. So are they good? Uh, they're all right. Um, they lose a lot of casting, uh, but they do get to be a little bit tankier that extra hit dice and base attack bonus is something um so if you're a spell caster that doesn't mind giving up uh five uh, levels of casting in order to be a little bit tankier and get some uh not so bad special abilities some of them are all right uh, a decent amount of defensive stuff uh some dark vision um that glare uh, those glare attacks aren't bad um especially uh fiendish glare um yeah uh if if you're willing to give up five levels of spell casting for that then it, it's, it's okay although five that five levels of spell casting is a lot like you can gain a lot of abilities with two and a half uh, having your you know spell levels two and a half levels higher however once you get to epic that matters less um and they do get the right skills to advance the things you really need to be advancing for epic so this isn't a terrible option especially for epic um pr uh, or even pre-epic it's all right um you know once you start going epic because you do get that better base attack bonus so it's, it's all right you might be a little weaker in the short run but uh, either way once you hit epic things will kind of balance out um once you get a little ways into epic at least so yeah, that's the uh, Acolyte of the Skin. Uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. I always love hearing from you guys. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like. Maybe subscribe to the channel for more D&D 3.5 content. I do one of these videos on every single class, race, and prestige class in Dungeons & Dragons 3.5. So ring that notification bell so you never miss out on a video. Anyways, as always, I'm Mitch, and I'll be seeing you.